One of the things that I really love about being Catholic is that when I look around the world, I see that the church really is representative of humanity. I see dark faces and light faces, black and white, and every shade in between, men, women, children. There is not a continent on earth where the Catholic Church has not had a presence. And even though all of us may not be related in the usual sense, we are related by baptism, which makes each and every one of us members of Christ's church. And we gather as the family of believers, the people of God, around the table, this table, to share the Eucharistic meal. But this central act of our lives together in Christ is not just a meal. It is not just a memorial. And that table, well, it's not just a table. It is an altar, and altars are for sacrifice. Jesus said, this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. I think what's just as important is what he did not say. Jesus did not say, when I'm gone, think of me fondly. He did not say, next time you eat bread, think of this meal. Jesus did not say, this bread is a symbol of my body. No, the Mass is a sacrifice. This is the purpose of his coming, to offer himself. He gives us the uttermost proof of his love for you and for me. Jesus institutes not a memorial day, but an act. Do this in memory of me. What I have done, do this. Now think about this for a second. If the apostles were to do what Jesus did, they had to be given the power to do it. You see, for the Jews of Jesus' day, to remember wasn't about looking back into the past. It wasn't about simply recalling earlier times. To remember was to make presence. Do this. Extend it through space and time. God is not bound by his creation. He is not bound by time or by physics or by the laws of the universe. He made them. Do this. Extend it through space and time. It transcends space and time so that all may share in the sacrifice of Christ. And when we do this, we have the Mass. This act of Christ made present to us here and now. And how does this one sacrificial act of Jesus represent itself to us today? There is the same priest, Christ. There is the same victim, Christ, at the Last Supper, on the cross, and at Mass here today. Our Lord is both the offerer and the one whom is offered, both priest and victim. The earthly priest that we see in every Catholic church at Mass is the instrument of Christ. He acts in the person of Christ. The people may offer gifts of bread and wine. The earthly priest may use his hands and his own tongue, but it is Christ himself who offers the sacrifice. Christ himself, who is both priest and victim. Jesus is the high priest who pleads on our behalf. Between 
our sins and his eternal glory, Jesus places his sacrifice, the sacrifice of himself. Jesus offered himself once for all. The Mass today is not a play. It is not a reenactment. It is not separate and distinct from Christ's act 2,000 years ago. We too then are in that room with the apostles. Each Mass that is offered is not a new sacrifice, but a re-presentation of Jesus' single sacrificial act of redemption. The Mass is an action, both in time and in eternity. In time because we see it taking place before our own eyes. It's also in eternity. All the merits of Christ's passion and death and resurrection are applied to us. Christ allows us to be united with that great act of love the action of Jesus made present to us here and now. You know, sometimes we Catholics can forget that receiving communion is not a symbolic act. It is truly Jesus whom we receive. And so we must never be casual or careless when we approach the altar to receive Jesus. The Eucharist is the body and blood of Jesus. This is the teaching of the church. It's a critical piece of our faith. Now, if you're looking for some kind of absolute and concrete proof, you'll likely never have it in this life. But even Thomas the Apostle wanted to see with his own eyes, did he not? You know, one of the most interesting historical artifacts that we have today is known as the Shroud of Turin. Many Christians believe that this long piece of fabric to be the actual burial cloth of Jesus of Nazareth. The fabric bears the image of a man, a man who apparently died violently, since there are also bloodstains on the cloth. Now, as you can imagine over the years, the shroud has been the subject of scientific testing. The dried blood on the shroud is indeed human and is of blood group AB. Ironically, one of the most outspoken defenders of the shroud's authenticity is not a Christian, but is a Jewish man named Barry Schwartz. Now, Schwartz, as I said, is not a Christian and Therefore, he's not prepared to say that Jesus is the Messiah or the Son of God. He's simply intrigued by the facts. Who, after all, doesn't like a good mystery, especially one that might be connected to one of the most famous people who ever lived? Here's what he is prepared to say, though. The science points to the shroud being the burial cloth of a man, buried according to the Jewish tradition after having been crucified in a way consistent with the gospel accounts. The image on the shroud was produced in a way that exceeds the capacities of modern technology. Now, in another case, in the 8th century, in what today is Lanciano, Italy, a priest was celebrating Mass at the monastery of St. Longinus, and doubt had crept into the mind of the priest about the presence of Jesus. At the words of consecration, the bread and wine no longer had the outward appearance of bread and wine, but rather took on the appearance of flesh and blood. Looking at the sacred vessels before him, the priest clearly was no longer looking at bread and wine. A miracle was declared, and the flesh and blood was eventually moved 
to the church of St. Francis in that same city where it remains today. Now in 1971, Dr. Eduardo Linoli, a professor of anatomy, conducted a scientific analysis of samples from Lanciano and concluded that the flesh was human cardiac tissue from a human heart of blood group AB. The blood itself had not decomposed and it contained no trace of preservatives of any kind. 25 years later, in 1996, in Buenos Aires, Argentina, a woman approached her parish priest to say that she had found a host that had been dropped or discarded at the back of the church. When the priest followed the established practice of placing the host in water to dissolve it, it appeared to turn into a bloody piece of flesh. Three years later, after the flesh had not decomposed, the diocesan bishop, Jorge Bergoglio, sent a sample for testing to a laboratory in California. The results indicated that the blood in the sample was human and was blood group A. B. Another sample was then sent to Columbia University in New York. It was concluded that the tissue was a fragment of human heart tissue that showed signs of severe stress and injury, as if the person had been beaten about the chest. The 1996 samples from Buenos Aires have since been compared to the eighth century samples from Lanciano, Italy. It has been determined that the samples from the Buenos Aires miracle and that of the Lanciano miracle, two continents apart and separated in time by more than a thousand years, contain the same DNA. The two samples are likely from the same person. It is a match. Now, as I said, if you want some kind of absolute proof, you probably won't have it in this lifetime. Skeptics might say that the laboratory samples had been adulterated or that there had been some sort of laboratory error. It's easier to try and explain it away than to be confronted with the notion that Jesus is exactly who he claimed to be, and he meant what he said. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. You know, if you and I look with the eyes of faith, we can see the miracle that takes place at every Mass. It's told that the priest who offered that Mass in Lanciano so many centuries ago called his monastery brothers to the altar and said this, O fortunate witnesses, to whom the blessed God to confound my unbelief, has wished to reveal himself visible to our eyes. Come, brethren, and marvel, marvel at our God, so close to us. Behold, the flesh and blood of our most beloved Christ. Christ. 